for years and years and years, the world has really used China for production. Dare I even say kind of depended on China for production. There's, there's nothing wrong with admitting that we've depended on China for production due to low cost and things like that. But now those days are coming to an end. They're changing. And one thing that you'll notice if you, if you ever live in China, you go to China, you travel to China, or you move to China, whatever, is that China has an older population. Now, I've also lived in Japan, been to Japan, and I wouldn't say that their population is as old as Japan. But I would say that the population in China is getting pretty old. It's very obvious that they're running out of workers, right? They're running out of people that can do the types of jobs that produce these, these low cost goods and factories. These types of jobs are getting harder and harder and harder for China to actually fill. But it's not just these jobs. It's also jobs like engineering and things like that and coding. See, there's this weird thing in China where a lot of Western countries and companies send their own people over to China for quality control. A lot of engineers will go over there, senior engineers and things like that. And the reason for that is because you quickly realize that when you go to work, for a company in China, or if you know anyone that's worked for a company in China, they'll always tell you the same thing, that there's a lot of engineers, there's no shortage of these people that are graduating and things like that. But the issue is, is that there's no senior engineers, there's no people that have been on the job for 20 years. There's no people that, that are top quality control people that are able to take care of these types of things. And so when you hear about a lot of like Chinese people coming to America and uh, you know, they, they, they always like to brag about this. They always like to say, well, America doesn't, doesn't have enough professionals. They don't have enough engineers or coders or, or whatever it may be. The, the problem is that our technology sector in America is ginormous. Think about how large the companies are in America compared to a lot of the companies in China. You, you look at, at the amount of employees that some of these companies have compared to the ones in China for tech companies, and it's not even close. Now, are there companies in China with large amounts of employees? Of course, it's, that's definitely a given. China has a large population. But most of these companies that have a lot of employees in China are not high-end workers. They're, they're not all scientists. They're not all senior level engineers. They're, they're not all these people in accounting with 20 years experience. They're not all project team leaders. They're, they're, they're not all senior accountants. You know what I mean? It, it, it's just not how it is. And so now in China, they're starting to have this issue where they've come to realize that not only do they have problems at the top of having qualified people run their companies at the top, but it's getting to the point to where at the bottom even, their bread and butter, what, what they have made the vast majority of their money for the past 50 years 60, 70 years now, and that is low cost labor, that it's getting harder and harder and harder for them to even fill those positions. A lot of these people in China, and this isn't because it's like, well, the pay is just raising in China and everyone wants to work for better jobs. That's, that's bullshit, okay? Uh, people even in like Guangzhou, Shenzhen, these people are averaging like, 5,000, 6,000 renminbi a month income. That's the average, okay, which is 
900, 1,000 US dollars a month. So it's not like these people are just making so much damn money hand over fist that they're not taking these jobs because that's not what it is. And, and understand for a second here, China is far more expensive than, than people think it is. You try to buy something like a car, you're probably gonna pay a tax on it because it's probably gonna come from like Honda or Toyota or Volkswagen because Chinese people don't really like buying Chinese cars. So they're gonna pay that tax. Chinese people wanna buy an iPhone. It's more expensive in China because you have to pay that tax. So when you look at the cost of living in China and the cost of rent in Beijing, Shanghai, you know, Shenzhen, uh, Guangzhou, these cities, the rent is quite high. It's over a thousand US dollars a lot of times for, for, for an apartment. You know, mine was over a thousand, 1500 US dollars. Um, and so Chinese people will share a lot of times and it's still expensive. It's still expensive. But the thing is, is that the jobs that these low labor jobs are also jobs that are in like tier two cities, tier three cities, you know, tier four cities, out, out in the rural areas. And here's the thing, part of the uh, poverty alleviation thing that the Chinese government really talks about how some people in these smaller towns have been pulled out of poverty is actually because of foreign investment. People, you know, countries like America, and Nike putting our factories out there and uh, doing, you know, believe it or not, it, it sounds crazy because, and this is an example that is an extreme example, but it will resonate with a lot of people. Everyone always wants to hate on Nike, right? Nike is like the enemy. People are like, oh, Nike, the, the sweatshop enemy, right? But what a lot of people in America don't understand is that the level in America is much different than the level in China. And what I mean by that is that the working standard is, is much lower in China than it is in America. As, as per an example, if you live out in the rural area, you are dirt poor, okay, in China. If you live out in the rural, you're dirt poor. If you're a farmer, you're dirt poor. And when I say you're dirt poor, I mean you're dirt poor. Like there's a lot of people where their floor and their house is dirt, and that's real, okay? That's that's, that's not a joke. You, you know, I can even post some of those clips uh, that I have seen in here. That stuff is real, okay? That stuff's not a joke. So for a lot of those people, when like a Nike factory comes to their hometown or their home city, and they say, hey, we're gonna hire 10,000 people, 20,000 people, and we're gonna give you a job. We're gonna give you 3,000 renminbi a month income we're gonna give you a place to stay because they actually give them dormitories. You're gonna get 3,000 renminbi a month, free food, a place to sleep, and uh, you know, you're gonna be on site, you're always gonna have a roof over your head, and uh, you'll never be homeless or anything like that. For a lot of these people, that's a great idea, right? But the thing is, is that a lot of these people that are doing those jobs have already been picked up right now that doesn't mean that they're necessarily rich or that they're uh you know that that uh they're living a super amazing life but they are working they they do have some kind of a job they do have a roof over their head you know and it's it's better than nothing you know it's better than what they had before so when you say that like well China is getting older, the people are getting older and they're running out of people. It's very true and it's causing an issue in China and pretty soon we're gonna see more of this. Not only because of the thing with like Russia and Ukraine that's going on and because of Russia closing its doors, but because the Western world and Europe is really sick of China. A lot of our companies don't wanna do business with China. They're leaving China. And you're gonna see this happen where China's gonna have a major shortage because they're already having this issue. They're having a major shortage and they're gonna to continue to have to steal intellectual property because they're not gonna be able to engineer to create from the ground up. They're not gonna be able to design from the bottom like we do in America, especially with like microprocessors and chips and uh, the continuation with automobiles and things like that. It's funny when you look at these Chinese cars 
or they look like Mercedes, or they look like Kia, or they look like Ford, and you're thinking, what the hell is going on? Well, that's because they're unable to engineer. They're, they're unable to do anything except copy. And that's because there's a lack of senior level workers, as I've said earlier in the video. That's all I wanted to talk about in today's video is the shortage in China. Um, not just on the high level of senior engineers, but even on the lower level. And I have seen both personally. Um, one of the companies I worked for, the reason that I got to work there was because I had experience. And my experience in that, in that industry was less than five years, which goes to tell you that essentially the people in that industry that I was working in in China was mostly new people. So I hope that that explains things and I hope that, that uh, people can understand that. Like, comment, subscribe, and have a good day.